Are you looking for a good solo player build that has the ability to take out multiple players? Are you tired of the same old, same old Alpha Bridge builds? Do you want to play something different for a change? Well, in that case, you've come to the wrong place because this video is yet again another Alpha Bridge build video. Yeah, I'm sorry to say, but my solo player build isn't as out of the box as my healer build. Regardless though, a lot of people have been asking me and requesting for an updated solo player build for both PvE and PvP, but more so for PvP. So for today, I thought it was around time to share it on my channel. And hey, who knows, maybe you'll be able to pick something up for your own build. So uh, let's begin. As I said, I'm running with a four piece offer bridge, but in addition to that, I of course also have two other pieces. Two high-end items to be more specific. I have a refresh mask, which increases all the healing by 30%. And then I also have a specialized backpack. I guess we all know what that thing does by now. Now, the reason that I run with these two items is so that I can make a sort of a hybrid build. I can make up a bit in the healing and the sustain that I am inherently lacking because I'm not really specking into electronics whatsoever. You see, I tried Savage, I tried Tenacious, I tried Reckless, I tried many of the other high-end items, but I just felt like... That even though they gave me extra damage or extra burst, they would never do as much for me as more free skill power would. Just because you don't spec into electronics doesn't mean that you have to completely neglect the skills. Because the stronger you can make your skills without specking into electronics, the stronger you're going to make your character. When you're playing in a team setting, of course having a high skill power build can be a very very good addition. Again, just look at the healer build. But when you're playing alone, that is not the case. You want to have as much damage as possible and more importantly, um, as much toughness as possible. And so you cannot really afford to spec into electronics and give up on those main stats. Looking at the main stats, you will notice that I have just enough firearms to unlock some of the talents, such as Brutal and Responsive, which require both 4,790. And all the rest of my stats are all put into stamina, giving me a toughness of around 480,000. Give or take a couple of rolls. As for the rest of the stats, we again have nothing really out of the ordinary. The chest piece has of course armor, it has exotic damage resilience and ammo capacity. The mask has skill power and enemy armor damage. The knee pads have armor, bleed resistance, enemy armor damage and burn resistance. Uh, the backpack has armor and again bleed resistance. The gloves have assault rifle damage, held on kill and damage to elites in the holster. Uh, just has all the main stats as high as possible with an armor roll on it as well. The mods, they are all stamina mods to boost my toughness even more, with of course all armor rolled as the major stat and the performance mods are all plus 6% first aid self heal. Yes, I know, very selfish, but it is a solo player build after all. As for the weapons, I'm of course using two assault rifles, with my primary weapon being a police M4, and my secondary weapon, well, you probably guessed it, it is the FAMAS. The six talents that I got on these weapons are brutal, unforgiving, uncomplicated, responsive, destructive, and competent. Uh, one thing that was important to me was to focus a lot on base damage increase when looking at what kind of talents that I wanted to run. This is because assault rifles, they don't really have a lot of crit damage bonus such as the SMGs, and specking into crit chance with these weapons is, most of the time, not really as good as specking into headshot damage or base damage increase. The way that I model these assault rifles is pretty much according to my assault rifle weapon modding guide. There are a couple of smaller rolls that are off, but that is simply because I couldn't get the right mods for it yet. But I mainly focused on headshot damage on the scope and on the muzzle. I got some crit damage on the grip and then I got extended magazine size on the magazine. Then the skills that I'm running with are, surprise surprise, the conceal pulse and the booster shot first aid heal. Now, because I'm running with the refreshed mask and because I have plus 6% first aid self heal performance mods, the booster shot fills up quite a bit of my health bar even though I'm running with a lot of HP relatively. If I wanted an even more powerful heal, I could have also gone for the overdose, which is not a bad choice by any stretch of the imagination, but the booster shot also adds another 15% flat base damage on top of all my weapon talents, which when you combine that with competent, which is another 10%, creates a very large on-demand 50% damage buff on top of the heal that I already have. That to me is very powerful because if you're playing solo, you need a lot of burst damage because otherwise you cannot kill players fast enough and you will eventually simply get overwhelmed. The signature skill that I'm using when playing alone is the recovery link. This thing is great because it manually activates if you're not playing in a group. And thus, as long as this thing is up, you don't really have to worry about dying. 
The cool thing about this is, is that it allows you to keep trading fire even if you're on low health. This allows you to benefit from the 25% extra damage that Unforgiving provides for a lot longer and with a lot more confidence, since you're essentially removing the risk of dying. I mean, I've had moments where I was ready to die, I was ready to let my ultimate pop out and I kept trading fire with other players. Um, but then I actually ended up winning the fight before my ulti went off, before my health bar dropped to zero. That is because my damage went up from 330,000 to 465,000. That is a crazy damage increase and it will definitely catch any other player off guard. Now the talents that I'm running with this build are triage, critical save, on the move and strike back. Your first reaction to this might be is why the hell I am running with triage when I'm playing by myself. But some players that also watch my healer build might already know the answer to this and that is because there's a little trick that I found out when I was playing with critical save and triage at the same time. If you have both of these talents equipped and you pop a med kit while you're in your last health segment then for some reason triage also procs and you get your cooldowns reduced by a flat 15% even if you're playing alone. This effect also stacks with the strike back talent which will allow you to get up to a 35% cooldown reduction on your skills just when you need it when you start falling to low health. Yes we're maybe losing out on a bit of damage because we're not going with the precision talent but it all comes back to trying to be that hybrid build trying to be that jack of all trades. Now, another interesting thing about Critical Save is that the 40% damage resilience is actually all damage resilience. And that stacks with the 15% all damage resilience that you get from the booster shot. This means that if I first pop a medkit and then pop a booster shot, for example when there are a lot of people around me and they're dropping my health and I need to regenerate really fast, my toughness will jump all the way to past 1 million and it will stay there for a good 10 seconds, no matter what. That allows me to face tank sometimes multiple players while doing huge amount of damage because of course I have competent, booster shot, responsive and unforgiving activated. Additionally, you can also add the all damage resilience from on the move, that's another 30%. This one is a little bit tricky to proc at times because it actually requires you to get a kill while moving, which isn't always a possibility, there isn't always an easy target to kill. But when you proc this, you can become close to invulnerable because with on the move, booster shot and critical save all active at the same time, your toughness will jump to 3.2 million for 10 seconds and it will sit there no matter what. In this case, you'll just be able to aim down sights and burst people down that have their survivor link or even their tactical link enabled. You pretty much cannot be killed during this time. Now, there are a couple of tips to proc on the move a little more often than you would normally get. Uh, for example, you can let downed players live and lead to their death or you can simply shoot them down with your gun while moving to the left or the right instead of bashing them because this way a downed agent is pretty much guaranteed on the move proc as long as they don't get revived. Additionally, you can also shoot at seeker mines, shock turrets or support stations as just as with any other on-kill talent in the game, on the move also works with skill objects. Very useful to keep in mind. The last tip that I have for you when playing solo, and this isn't really something that has to do with the build, but it is to use grenades very wisely. Frag grenades, but also stun grenades, they can be your best friends. Especially if one or more players are trying to push in on you. The trick is to throw it around the corners or to quickly drop it down on the floor and just keep running. And then there's a chance that your opponent might not see it or sees it too late. And who knows, if they step one inch too close, then it's a free and easy kill for you most of the time. Do all these things right and you will find yourself being able to take on two, three or maybe even four players at times. And you should end up with a lot of free loot. Uh, especially with all the extractions that you can hijack. Just don't get overconfident like I did or else the LMB might put you back on your place. Oh, and also you better hope that you don't run into any cheaters when you're playing on PC. They seem to be back and there's not a whole lot you can do against them when they fly through buildings and shoot you from across the map. But yeah, that's going to be all for this video. As I said, pretty cookie cutter build. Four piece offer bridge, assault rifles. Yes, we've already seen this, but to be honest, if you want to have the highest damage possible while still having a, a good amount of toughness, then this is the best way to go for it. This is pretty much overpowered right now when we compare it to the other sets in the game. 
The enemy armor damage that comes as a base on the assault rifles, plus the uncomplicated talent on the FAMAS, plus the amazing handling that the M4 or the LVOAC assault rifles have, make this combination in particular something that outclasses everything else in the game if it comes down to damage. And I'm sorry to say, but that's just the way it is, and we have to wait for the developers to either adjust one of these things, or bring the other sets and weapon classes a bit back up to par. So yeah, that's all I have to say on that. As always, I will see you guys later, or like they say, in the Netherlands. See you later.